Let me show you some anatomical knowledge about hip joints and uh, other parts that I always, um, of course, I study from the books and, the, um, and other videos, etc. But I get lots of ideas by just looking at anatomy. Um, the hip joints, this is from a ballet book called Inside Ballet Technique. Um, but hip joints, everyone has a different angles of hip bones. Um, attached to see this is the socket hip socket of course attached to that so depending on the angle of your bone the mobility of your hip joints are decided and also depending on the shape of your hip socket so you can work flexibility and mobility, but there, of course, there are certain limitations each individuals have. But that doesn't mean you have to give up, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not born to be. Okay, you may not be born to be able to do the 180 degree splits, etc. But it's very important that you have a mobility there. So any kicks and rotation or snap movement, you don't rely on your tension, but you are relying on the mobility of, you don't use only muscle, you don't use only tendons, you don't only use, but you do also use the bone, you use the breath. It has to all incorporate, otherwise you'll be just doing that kind of kick and then when you have the impact, it will go back to your bone. Um, and then also the surrounding ligaments. Um, and also, I was showing the exercise of sacrum. If you look at the um, diagram of what? So this is the hip joint. And there's a sacrum. And the muscle attached to sacrum goes directly to the hip joint. So by stimulating this area, of course it helps your hip joint to get mobilized. And then also attached, I've been talking a lot about source in our previous exercises, and that's connected, all connected to this area. And so the area all around, which is not quite, you know, easily touched because it's quite inside of your body, but you use a lot of this, or you have to use a lot of this, otherwise you rely too much on your cord. So any of the action you do, lifting a leg, source gets involved. Okay, and so you can think of a lot of stretching and strengthening exercise by just looking at those anatomy books. I always think about it quite a lot. And also if you look at latissimus dorsus, and that's connected to, as you can see, the big hip bone, and it goes to all the way to your shoulders and the rib cage. So if you are stiff in your arm, then you will also get stiff in your lower back. Um, and also another picture that I find it really useful, there's all the tendons and muscles running through the neck all the way to the tendon attached to the sacrum. So I didn't add this exercise in the last video, but okay, when you're doing this exercise, okay, stimulate the sacrum. But if you want to get this, oopsie, <laughs> it's a bit hard to see, like that, you also stimulate the rib cage, that's the end of the muscle. So we're starting, starting off the, this point of the muscle, but if you go down there and stimulate the rib cage from the front or back, wherever you can reach, because that's the, again ending point of your muscle and the tendon, and it just gets more and more mobile by just stimulating this. So most of the general stretch we did at school or whatever often they just work a lot on the middle of the muscle but if you work on the ending point which is of the tendon attached to the bone it actually releases a little bit quicker and then you need less strenuous pulling um, and you can save a lot of time particularly if you need to quickly warm up or um, if you're nervous etc and you feel like your muscles are not get, getting warm and also if you're going down this way most people will pull down like okay, pushing down but the best thing is that if you think about anatomy that it just extends this muscle and then that's the 
source actually pulling those areas. So you here actually tuck your stomach in and pull your stomach. Then it's actually less painful to go down forward. And then also, if you go like that with the neck stiffen up, if you look at that diagram again, where are you? Here. So all the muscle connected to hip all the way to the neck. So if your neck is going to different angle, it doesn't help you to extend that muscle. So rather than going that way, lengthen the spine, lengthen and flatten your tummy and use the stomach to pull the back flat rather than try to go against it. But roll it, roll it, and also talk to the neck, that back part. Stimulate with your fingertips. Or go down more. But talk to the back where you saw in a diagram. Stimulate it. Rather than push it, but stimulate it. Even just thinking about it actually gives a bit of stimulation to that area. Then you can even like lengthen even more of that lower part. So you just release the head part, which is the lower part, the three more muscle area that you so you do that. And also important thing is also the angle of the foot. If you do that, or if you do that, if you do that, of course you work on the different groups of the muscle. So you know, depending on what motion you're after, if you have a kneecap problem, most likely this part's already pulling. So you want to really extend that push down and flex the foot. Then you really lengthen this part that'll help you to circulate the area that's been pulling and getting tight. Okay, and if you're really wanting to do some of the kekomi front, kekomi, that Shotokan doesn't really have, a lot of Chinese martial arts have, then you want to have that strength and the mobility in that. So you would like to have stimulated, like active muscle in this group. And so, or well, like a pre-A in a ballet, so keep breathing in, flatten the tummy once again. And work on not leaving the kneecap always together, 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 because bending is easy. This keeping the leg straight is difficult but don't pull it that as you feel like something is tearing you do it in a way that you've got to like work on the coordination of muscle and when you feel some part is really tight breathe in and hold that area and then release with exhalation and also just stimulate it scratch that area because that's those are the passage of the area that you want to circulate And often, if you're working on your leg, work around the spine or even to the arm, as you saw, the dismus goes to all the way there. So if your shoulder blades are tight, then you won't be able to, it's just going like this and you won't be able to. So you have to make sure your shoulder blades are loose to go further with your mobility and also body coordination. So I highly recommend, I, I, this is my Japanese book, um, but you know, not just general one, you have to really go into the quite a detailed one I've got in English um, for the medical students one. Sometimes they're going a bit too far for me to be able to use because it just goes into virus and that kind of thing. Um, so find the ones that it makes sense to you because the more you understand, you can go to a deeper level of anatomy book. Some, if you are not acquainted with it, you can buy the very, very basic one. Um, this one is, I like, this is for more like a professional masseuse use. Um, they have a chart and um, different color diagrams and they give you some ex strengthen exercises and reflex point.
Um, I do have many, many other um, uh, anatomy books. And I find it useful. So, for example, if I have students, they have the problem that I never had a problem like elbows or something like that, or even tall, then I can um, look at the anatomy, and then what might be the exercise that they can do and what part that they should stimulate. So I can guess and I can also plan a safe um, class zone or recovery plan for the students to come back and think particularly if you're senpais if you're teaching students um, it's, it's it's really really important to have more and more deeper knowledge about the body but also it actually gives you a lot of different ideas because you know when you look at the charts or pressure points etc makes a lot of sense and it, your martial arts studies becomes a lot more exciting so Hopefully this gives you some ideas.